All right. Well, welcome into the Digital Dispatch Podcast presented by Freight School Playbook. And I am your host, Blythe Brumleaf. And today I'm joined by James Crowley, the managing partner of Texas Media Foundry. They specialize in graphics and video for the logistics industry mostly, but also dabble in other industries too. If you're actually watching the live video of this, you can see some of the artwork in the background that they proudly display in order to show off their work that they can that they're capable of. Now, James, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to list your background here. You started in the trucking industry in 1992 as an 18-year-old part-time dock worker. You had three years later, you got your CDL. You've driven local, line haul, regional, and over the road over 20 years in the industry in one capacity or another. So why did you want to start a media company after all that? I believe I can tag it back to YouTube. It's YouTube's fault. <laughs> um, and the fact that I had a little snapshot camera that my wife had that made like little three minute standard definition clips. And I thought, Hey, it would be interesting to take this camera, Velcro it to the dash, like an original dash cam, if you will. Mm -hmm. And, uh, go into these different places I'd go to and just show my family and whoever else wanted to see it for whatever reason, what I do on a daily basis. And, uh, it started with that. And I've always been kind of interested in camera type stuff and video and film and, and, mm -hmm. and things like that. And YouTube has really giving me the opportunity to get to where I'm at now. And that's, that, it's interesting that you bring that up because out of the entire industry, like when I speak of the industry, I'm talking about logistics in particular, the drivers have the best social media in the game. Why do you think that is? Is it because they're showing that other side of the road that, that, that rarely people get to see unless you're in the industry? Everybody's got their own reason for, for getting online and, and posting content, pictures, video, and what have you. Uh, some people are social butterflies, but when they're driving a truck, they can't be a social butterfly. They're on their own day in and day out. And this gives them an opportunity to kind of build an audience and connect with people in a, in a more modern, unique way than what we did, say, 20 years ago. It's been interesting to see it kind of evolve over the last what, about 15 years of YouTube. It's interesting. It's very interesting. Now, you, you mentioned in, uh, we did a brief questionnaire before this interview and sort of chatted a bit, and you mentioned the storytelling side of the industry being one of the most untapped portions of how companies can get their name out there in order to help you sort of humanize their brand. Do you know of any companies within the industry that are doing an exceptional job of this, uh, you yourself included? Well, <laughs> we've done some work, and I'll, I'll pick on them because uh, there's, there's some good people over there. I, I really appreciate what they do. Brady Trucking mm -hmm. out of Utah, and they've got uh, different facilities kind of in the you know Texas and western states. And the drivers have a story. They have something to say, and allowing a driver to speak their mind without fear of, oh, it's got to fit in a certain box or whatnot, you know, and then it gets mm -hmm. to the editor, and, you know, we do what we need to with it, but generally speaking, allowing people on the front line to voice who they are, what they're about, why they do what they do, what they love and hate about the job. It makes it real. It makes it real, you know, relevant to other people that will view that content and be like, I get that. Mm -hmm. I understand. I, I'm totally that guy or I'm that girl. I've, I've lived that particular thing. I'm going to share this. That's a key point. Share this with my friends, share it with family, share, share it with a buddy of mine who lives out there who might want to get a job out there who has a CDL. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, building the content that's engaging that people want to watch and that's where the magic is for hmm. me and i think uh, you, you kind of display that really well in, in the background there with all of your your artwork of the work that you guys have produced why did you want to display that right off the jump as soon as someone walks into your office it's it's a matter of utilizing space that we've got hmm. it's uh we got this space in downtown Bryan, Texas. It's it's very artsy. There's a wine bar next door. There's a village cafe on the other side of that. There's an artisan pizza joint right here in a glass shop that we share a wall with. Having a trucking video production company here just doesn't really fit. But what we've got here is an opportunity to get people in the door. And we do more than trucking. I mean, that's that's my primary goal in life is to, to create trucking content because mm -hmm. it's an industry that I know and love so well. But to have other opportunities for people local or otherwise to come in and say, Oh, there's this interesting art. You know, my husband loves Peterbilt trucks. He's never driven one, but he's always talked about them. And, and here's a nice painting or a canvas that he can put in his man cave, you know, uh, that kind of thing. But it's really, you know, there's enough foot traffic here to get people in the door. We can give them a card with a QR code. Hmm. You know, we make video, we do graphic design. Maybe you happen to have a small business in town 
that could use some of the stuff that we do that's not even trucking related. It could be really anything. And having this space allows people to walk in and see what we do. And I think you, you hit on a good point because there are a lot of other industries that we can sort of pull from, but I think traditionally within logistics and trucking, it's more or less you're looking at what your direct competitors are creating. And a lot of times it isn't that creative of, of what they're doing. And so you, it tends to be, you know, so a, a lot of sheep that just sort of follow the trends and just sort of follow, you know, certain creative aspects. What do you think that other industries are, are any other industries doing it better than I would imagine a lot of industries are doing it better than trucking, but what about on the industrial side? Are there any aspects that, that people can pull from that they just don't even know where to start when it comes to creatives such as photography and videography? Yeah. Um, industry industrial settings for the most part, trucking, oil and gas, you know, any, any of those industrial type settings, whatever video they utilize, I always see it as it, it could be better, especially you know, going back to the trucking side of things. There are forward thinking companies that, that embrace the new technologies and new video and, and, and things of, of that nature. But there's a lot that still will just put out a print ad in a small driver app and continually use that without using Facebook or Instagram or any of those things. And they're free, they're available. You may not get the best reach like you once did on mm -hmm. Facebook, but at least you have an opportunity to put some content out there and get people to see who you are and what you do. Now, you mentioned social media. Do, do, is there any particular part of social media as it's evolved that you find you know, sort of frustrating? What are some tips that I guess a, com a new company to the game could use whenever they're, they're being introduced to social media? Well, what I can say for, for Facebook, just for my side of the aisle of what I've seen, and I'm not really huge into the, the underhood analytics of Facebook. I've got a guy here that is good at it, so I lean on him for those kinds of things. But our Facebook trucking related page, uh, it's on the doorstep of 20,000 likes, which, you know, that's a vanity metric you take for what it is. You know, I got somebody about to walk in the door sure. here. Hold on. Time out, everybody. <laughs> Come on in. Come on in. Come on. There's the bell. <laughs> hey, Rob. I'm just doing my little video podcast. You got to wave to everybody because you came through. Oh, we're keeping this in now. Hi. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're just one big happy family here. <laughs> so uh, anyhow, with Facebook, we're knocking on 20,000 likes, and we've been knocking on 20,000 likes for an entire year. Very little growth. Hmm. And we even had somebody that we hired to do some of the social media postings and, and sharing and whatnot. And it didn't really move the needle a whole lot. Mm -hmm. um, with Facebook... You've got to pay to play. You've yep. got to throw money at it to make it work. So for somebody getting into it, like originally, like you said, kind of first time getting your feet wet, making this thing work, you got to have some dollars to throw at it. If you make the most amazing piece of content, photo, video, whatever, and you put it out there and you just cross your fingers, nothing's going to happen. You've got to have really a list of things that you need to do. You need to know, okay, once this thing's put together, how are we going to attack it? Who are we going to target? What kind of dollars are we going to throw at? Maybe do some A-B testing on a couple of different platforms and see what's going to engage with your audience the best. Now, when you talk about social media and, and with a lot of your growth that you've seen over the years, is that typically how customers find you or do you do a lot of the scoping? What makes for a good fit creatively when you're working with a potential client? When we're going with a potential client, we want to really listen to what they're looking for. Um, we don't want to go in and be like, all right, this is going to fix everything because we don't know everything. Mm -hmm. We need to know everything from you. The more we're able to talk openly back and forth, here's our problems. What do we do to fix it? And then we can kind of, you know, diagnose and figure out what's going to be the best thing to, to move the needle. It, it comes down to communication. Um, there are some companies that say, okay, we need you to be an order taker, da, 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 you know, and we can do that, mm -hmm. but it doesn't, doesn't necessarily fit what we do. We can provide that service, but we like to be able to kind of help with some guidance because if it hasn't worked in the past and they use videographer, Ted, <laughs> whoever, and Ted films all kinds of stuff and he's just kind of new to trucks and he's never been in one, but he makes this video and it does okay, and then they want us to do the exact same thing, they're going to get the exact same result. We'd like to just kind of go back on what we've done in the past and re-engineer it a little bit, 
because you don't want to make cookie cutter. Hey, we did this for company X over mm-hmm. here. It's going to be perfect. We do the exact same thing for you. It's not going to be. Every company is different. Yeah, you know, we just try to dial it in and, and give them not necessarily just what they want, but probably what they need mm-hmm. too. That's true. That, that's a very good point. Now, with all of the content that you've helped create, not just for your, your business, but for other companies as well, is there any kind of trends that you've seen that works particularly well or maybe something that was a little surprising that worked really well? That's a good question. I will, I will say, I'll start off by saying this year has been really slow for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's been slow for a lot of people. Um, there, there are a couple of competitors in the space, not necessarily in trucking, but in other video production that has to do with outdoors and and industrial and whatnot that have really hit it out of the park which is fantastic um that helps raise everybody up in in visibility but for us personally there hasn't been a whole lot of movement i think it's just a matter of i mean we go in every day and we put something new online in different locations and we're still trying to figure out in this current climate what exactly is clicking Hmm. with everybody so we're, we're still on that process ourselves to figure out what, what that is. Now, I, I think it's kind of interesting that over the last, you know, ever since COVID hit, that a lot of the, the industry has moved to online meetings, exactly what we're doing here. I wonder, and this is just me thinking out loud, that if maybe some of the more lower budget, is, is that what people are more going after? More the low budget, you know, I can record this with my cell phone. Um, and what do I need a videographer for? How? How can, can companies sort of bridge that gap between, you know, professionals doing the work and just another person just, you know, throwing something up and seeing if it sticks? Well, I will say, generally speaking, if you can take your iPhone or whatever you've got, which uh, we all pretty much have now, and make content, anybody can do it. Anybody can do it. And it can be kind of low budget looking. Maybe that's what you're looking for to just kind of have that organic straight out of the office, go out to the field and and get that point of view there there's nothing wrong with that at all to move up to the professional level i mean yeah there's some budget that needs to go in there uh there's cost of a lot of different things that that go into it but low budget works but if you're a mega carrier big 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 time operation you have people in-house that do your video and if Mm -hmm. you don't you hire professionals because you have a particular image to maintain because it's already a preconceived notion that high-end high dollar it's got to look really clean and polished but if you're you know a smaller operation 10 trucks 50 trucks 100 trucks whatever you can do more of an organic look Mm -hmm. and you know it just it kind of fits is there one thing that you think within the industry that you wish more people knew when it comes to the creative side because i i think a lot of companies out there will will say i i just need a, a few pages for a website i don't need anything more than that what is the value of the creative and having someone like yourself be able to expand that creative more than just you know a picture of a truck the thing is with that is Again, it goes back to, you know, a smaller truck operation. They probably don't need a whole lot. It's a matter of if they're looking to expand. Are they trying to bring on more clients, uh, more loads? Are they trying to recruit more drivers? You know, it's it's really kind of a push-pull that, you know, if they're in the status quo, they're doing okay. They need to continually put content out, but it doesn't have to be really high-level, high-end professional stuff. If it's working for them... They don't need to add to that unless they just want to and see if they can kind of bring their numbers up. Very true. Now, when somebody reaches out to you, what does that process look like? Does it, are you going out to their job site? Are you going out to their offices, um, shooting film? Are you going out on the road with a driver? Walk me through sort of what, I guess, a typical client looks like. Okay. For a uh, typical client, and, and I say typical, I mean, everybody's got a little bit of a sure. different... Uh, thing for them but um, well we've got a client coming up here in a couple of weeks and what that's going to entail is going down to their facility uh, outside of Houston and spend an entire day Uh, they'll have three or four drivers that will be available and we're just the two things we need to do is one video and two photography Hmm. and they're going to use the photography in their social media the video be like little 20 second snippets of particular action we we travel all over and if we need to get on the road shots in a particular location we can do that we've got uh, gear that can be mounted on the outside of a vehicle to 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 get rolling shots Hmm. um, drones you know whatever that's cool whatever we need to yeah whatever we need to pull out i even have a phone number to a guy with a helicopter down there (laughs) if i need to get 
professional high speed whatever i can get that done but yeah on the trucking side of things most people want their trucks their drivers everything clean everything looking good and you know best foot forward for their image do you have a favorite job site that you've worked at or worked on i really enjoyed again going back to brady trucking Mm -hmm. uh, their place in utah vernal utah Uh, first off it was january (laughs) and it was incredibly cold, but it made for some really, really stunning footage. Uh, snow, and you know, we don't get a whole lot of snow down here. I don't think you do where you no, are either. It is 40 degrees uh, here, and everybody's <laughs> losing their minds. <laughs> it was 28 here this morning, first time since February. It dropped below freezing. Um, and we only get like 10 days like this, so it's, it's fine. Yeah. Um, but with the Utah shoot, it was really special because I was able to call one of my friends who's a drone operator who lives in Colorado, <laughs> And he drove out and, and uh, we went out to an oil lease on some Indian land out in, uh, in Utah. And I think it was like 20 something miles off of the nearest paved road and this big, huge mountain range and, and dirt road and going down uh, from the oil field lease. And it was just it was really, that was a lot of fun. Are you able to share some of the footage that you that you take whenever you're on the job site, or is it all exclusive to the client? Or I'm assuming you work that out for each one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so far, um, everybody that we've had is like, yeah, share it away, do your thing, because cool. in turn they get a little chunk of the the visibility right. from that. You know, I'm on location. I'll make a a quick Facebook live or, or something like that. I'm on location at Brady. Da 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 da. Here's what we're doing. Here's the camera we're using, you know, just, you know, some of the the geek stuff, you know, that that other people don't necessarily care about. But I mean, I like it. And, you know, there's enough people in the audience that are like, oh, that's kind of neat. That's cool. Um, You know, share things like that. And and, uh, I haven't had anybody yet say, don't, this is under wraps, confidential, (laughs) what have you. Unless it's like a new, brand new truck or something, the top secret development or something along those lines, which is, I guess, I reserved I for like a Tesla or somebody. Yeah, I haven't come across any embargoes <laughs> yet. Now, for someone like me, someone like yourself, we, we know the power of really good imagery and, and graphics and what it can do for your brand. And historically, over the end, over the course of years, it, it's not, I guess, the, the importance level isn't placed there for a lot of different companies. Do you see that tide switching a little bit? I, I, I do. Um, the ability, again, with an iPhone or an Android phone to create really good visuals, you know, and if you take your time and learn a little bit about lighting, just like not necessarily setting up lights, but you're outside, think about where the sun is in relation to your subject. And, and it, you know, the photo apps that are available that can, can manipulate and you can add text and buttons and whatever else you want. Uh, it's so accessible now to really go beyond just a plain Jane picture mm-hmm. that's just, you know, kind of vanilla you can really step up the quality of what you, what you post. And, and on, on a similar note to that, you know, there, there are a lot of companies who will just simply put out a picture of a truck. Is there any kind of, I guess, tips or tricks that someone can take that, that maybe they are just a small carrier and, and they want to be able to photograph their fleet and show off, you know, maybe their, their five to 10 trucks. Are there any kind of, I guess, tips that you could give them in order to, to take better photography or better photos of their fleet? The easiest thing I can say is sunrise and sunset, golden hour. Mm-hmm. Um, the lighting in the in the sky is just right, and, and most people know this that you know seven o'clock in the morning or seven o'clock at night. You know, as the sun's starting to go down, there's just that kind of glow to to everything when the when the lighting's just right. And if you take pictures during that time with the sun behind on your trucks, mm-hmm. you know uh, things like that you know, with a, with an iPhone, you can get a really good shot out of that. Oh, that's a, that's a really great tip. Now, I guess for my last question, I'm going to say, uh, you mentioned being able to roll with the punches as a success trait for a business owner or a manager, but why is curiosity also important to you as a leadership skill? Curiosity for me, uh, for my guys, I got a couple of guys back there and you saw one of them a minute ago. No, thanks, Rob. Uh, <laughs> I'm curious to see what they can do. Hmm. I'm curious to, to, to push their boundaries, to see what level they can get to with their graphic design, their logo creation, uh, video production when they go out. I'm kind of the chief video guy, uh, although I do a lot more pointing these days versus turning the camera on. But 
you know, I'm able to, I, I'm curious about new technologies that are coming out, new software, new programs, new ways of, of doing things to, to try to stay, if you will, on the cutting edge of video, uh, whether it be the equipment or, or what have you, um, and just trying to, trying to stay a step or two ahead. Sure. Uh, and that's getting harder to do for anybody in the creative space mm -hmm. because the way it's gone in the last five to 10 years, the quality of the equipment has gone way up and the barrier of entry has gone way down. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot more people who may not have thought, you know, I want to go do video or I want to do photography or whatever. They now have access to the tools, the same tools I have. They have access to YouTube tutorials to learn anything and everything they need to know. That also cues into my curiosity because I'm constantly watching tutorials on YouTube to learn the next best thing, the new thing. Curiosity is important. If you're not curious, you you end up stagnant and you just stick with what you know and you're going to get left behind if you just stick with that one little thing. Very well said. Now, before I let you go, is there anything else that you would like the, the audience to know about? Anything, anything you guys got coming up in the pipeline or, or looking forward to for the new year? I'm looking forward to getting back out there. Hmm. I mean, it's as simple as that. Getting back out there. Uh, Great American Trucking Show in Dallas is already canceled. Mm -hmm. That's that's not going to happen in 2021. But the last I checked, Mid-America in Louisville is still on. End of March, I think it is. And uh, looking forward to going out there and meeting whoever does show up and uh, have some fun out there. You know, for us to be able to go and video events mm -hmm. is huge because it allows – everybody to see us out there gives us an opportunity to to network a little bit and uh, hang out maybe drink a beer at the end of the day with whoever so i miss that this year yes. and you know I, I think we all have um but that's what i'm looking forward to and you know just going out there and and uh trying to trying to do the best we can with what we've got and uh yeah i think yeah absolutely i mean that's all you can really ask of yourself and, uh, and, and of other people is just to give your best effort um but, but likewise i am looking forward to more in-person events in in 2021 i i i'm gonna be one of the first people back out there um <laughs> but that i guess that's maybe just the state of florida blood in us that's uh that, that's getting back out there quicker than the rest of the country all right oh, yeah. well thank you so much james for for taking the time to chat with me today if you want to see more of james's work head on over to his social media by searching text rally or you can snag those links directly from his website at txfoundry.com thank you again james well thanks so much this is awesome thank you all right thank you <laughs> have a good one